Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to configure GitHub hosted runners on an Azure virtual network. There are two ways to get this configured. The first by default way is to use the network security groups. Now we're not going to use that option. I'll cover it in a moment. We're going to actually use the Azure firewall to allow our GitHub hosted runners to communicate to our on-prem resources via a VPN, but then also monitor and manage the traffic as it exits that firewall and we can control its access for that runner. If I pull up a quick diagram here, how we're going to do this is we're going to, again, leverage the Azure firewall, but there are specific URLs that are required for the GitHub hosted runners. We're going to leverage those URLs as a policy within our Azure firewall so that the GitHub hosted runners that spin up, the compute will run in Azure, but a private NIC will be uh, established in our predefined VNet will, that will have privileges through firewall policies to access GitHub, again, through those URLs that are required, and to access our VPN to our on-prem data center. All right, I hope that makes sense. But let me break down exactly kind of the differences here. There are some prereqs. First of all, you do need the larger runners, the four to 64 CPU runners. So these aren't the standard two core. And the only regions that are supported are East US, East US 2, and West US 2 currently. All right, so keep that in mind. Now, if we look at what the other configuration option is, again, we're doing a firewall, but if we look at what the other configuration is, which is leveraging the network security groups, GitHub provides the script to configure your NSG. And it does have all the ports uh, identified as for, port 443. But as you can see, there's a long list of IP addresses that are being allocated here. Now, this could be absolutely fine if you're familiar with using NSGs, absolutely deploy it this way. But in some cases, you might not want to manage uh, CIDR blocks. You might want to just manage firewall rules. In that case, we're going to leverage in, in this design, we're going to leverage the self-hosted runner URLs. You can see that there's they're already broke down here. So these are needed for essential operations, downloading actions, using OIDC tokens, and if you have packages, packages. Now we've got what, about, about a dozen uh, URLs here. And those are the ones we're gonna include in our firewall policy so that the GitHub hosted runners in our VNet can communicate with GitHub. Now, if we come over here to my configuration in Azure, you'll notice I have two resource groups. This one here, this test VM, just holds a virtual machine Without a public interface, this virtual machine is connected to my VNet in this NSG, or sorry, in this resource group. So I have a VNet here. And when we look at the connected devices, we'll see that we've got that one network interface that's connected there. Now I've already got this established with my VPN, so we're not gonna cover that, all right? But essentially it's a Azure firewall connected via VPN to a data center. And we can cover what those rules look like. We look at our firewall policies and rule collections. And I've got a couple of rule collections. This one here just allows network connectivity between Azure and my on-prem. And then this here are the two policies that I've included so that I could conduct my initial testing. This app collection just holds two. This allows me to communicate with my uh, on-prem data center. So I can do a curl test to make sure the traffic is flowing. This one here, because the VM is uh, an Ubuntu VM, will allow me to pull packages from Ubuntu. If we look at the other policy, the GitHub collection, this contains all of the URLs that we previously discussed, right? So all of the URLs here, it's included all of those. The network is on a specific network for GitHub. If we look at our virtual network again, we'll see that I provision a subnet specifically for the GitHub hosted runners, which is this 4.0 slash 24 network. It's already pre-configured. I've already run the script and I'll cover that in a moment and it's routing all of its traffic to the Azure firewall. Okay, jumping in, let's take a look at our traffic from our virtual machine. There we go. And now I should be able to ping my data center, 172.16.1.9. And sure enough, I can ping it through that firewall. I can also curl a web server that's running there. <clears throat> and we get a return. So we definitely know that traffic is flowing. 
Now let's also see if we can curl something else. Now what's not in here is uh, anything to, let's say Microsoft, right? So we could say curl HTTPS Microsoft or www.microsoft.com. And you see that I'm not allowed. Now you might think that this is well because it's an SSL issue, but that's not actually correct. If we go to my bastion host here and I'm doing a constant ping, as you saw that, uh, up the VPN just to keep the VPN alive while I'm doing this video. And we can, uh, let's do that curl, HTTPS, www.microsoft.com, and we'll get a return of our decrypted Microsoft header page. Okay, so uh, that does work. Now I'll go back to my ping here. All right, let's make sure we can get to our internet traffic. One thing I didn't do yet, we'll do sudo uh, app get update, and this should pull down the updates for Ubuntu. And sure enough, it's communicating with Ubuntu. Again, we're using our firewall policies so that the firewall can communicate with Ubuntu based on that policy and can communicate with my lab, again, based on the policy that we had put in, uh, put in place there. Okay, so that's our setup. We have a GitHub hosted URLs applied as a policy to our Azure Firewall. Azure Firewall can communicate via a VPN to our other data center. Now this is on-prem for me, but it could also be another cloud provider like AWS or Google. And we're leveraging private networking, and we're gonna use a runner uh, on that private network to do the same thing. And we'll go ahead and get that set up now. So the first thing we have to do is run a script. Now this is a slightly modified version of the one that's provided by GitHub. The one that's provided by GitHub actually configures the environment for you, and it also relies on those network security group configurations. I'll give this script as well on my GitHub uh, channel, so you'll be able to pull that in, uh, or at least reference it for your build. And what we're doing is we're declaring this location, resource group name, the VNet name, the subnet name. Again, in my case, this was um, that GitHub runner name. The database ID, I'll cover in a second, your subscription, and then you're gonna give the resource settings a name. So you're not going to actually create this within Azure. You're gonna just label it a name or give it a name uh, down here, all right? So this will create a new resource for you. And in my case, I think it was like GitHub-network-settings. Uh, the database ID. To get your database ID, you'll go to the documentation and find this curl script where you will require your enterprise slug. Your enterprise slug is the uh, URL slug. And if we look at my enterprise, I'm running a GHEC emu or manage users instance here. And this is vault-tech-emu. And this would be the slug that I would use. All right. So I would put that in here. I would also need a bearer token, so keep that in mind. You have to create a personal access token. Run the curl command, and it will give you a short digit uh, number as your database ID, and that would go here. So after your database ID is in there, subscription ID, you'll log into your account, set your subscription. You'll then register the provider, the GitHub network service provider. You'll then associate that to your VNet, and then you'll run this final script, which creates that resource with the GitHub network in your location and set it on that VNet leveraging your database ID and it will spit out a very long number. That number is what we're gonna to need to pull the settings, the network resource settings in to GitHub. Go to our settings here and you'll see that this beta feature, let me accept that, beta feature for hosted compute networking. That's what we're looking for. We'll come here, add a new network configuration, Azure Private Networking, Give it a name, we'll say Azure Private. And then we'll add a Azure Virtual Network. Here's where that long number will go in. And we'll see that it's valid and we have all of our information already pre-populated. And we'll add the Azure Virtual Network. Now that that's done, we can create our configuration. There are no runner groups. Here's our networking. Let's create a runner group for it. New runner group. And I'll just call this one VATS. Select our organizations we want these runners to run on. I'll say all organizations, but you can definitely select yours. 
what workflows you want to allow. I'm saying all here. There's currently no network configuration, but this is where we're going to select that Azure private. So I want to make sure I do that. Now we can create our group. Now that the group's done, we're going to actually need to create runners. So let's go to runners, new runner, new GitHub hosted runner. They only offer Ubuntu and Windows currently. So let's say bats, Ubuntu. Latest, again, you have to have the four core or above. Uh, 50 jobs concurrent, that's fine. Runner groups, I select my bats runner group. All right, so the runners will be associated to this runner group. This runner group is then associated to our uh, private Azure private networking. Assign unique static IP addresses. We don't want to select this because again, we're doing all private networking and we'll create our runner. Our runner is ready. Now, what I have seen before when I didn't have my firewall networking configured correctly, I did get an error up here after a few minutes and I refreshed the page. It said that it could not communicate. So go ahead and configure this, give it a couple of minutes, refresh the page and make sure it's still in a ready state. Now let's jump over and do a test. In this action, we're gonna use that GitHub hosted runner connected to our private network, and we're gonna do both tests. The first test is this actions checkout. Now it's not actually gonna do anything with it, but it's gonna validate the fact that we can communicate with GitHub by pulling the package necessary for this checkout. The next step is it's going to curl the same URL that we did across the VPN tunnel. So we should be able to validate both access to GitHub and access to our on-prem VPN. I'll go ahead and commit this and it should trigger the action right away because we're on a push to main event. Now as that's done, let's go ahead and take a look at our action. We can see that hello has been started. There we go. And we'll go ahead and open this up and we can see that it looks like everything's done already. Here's the hello world script. We can see that sure enough, it did it. Uh, the action checkout was complete. So it was able to communicate with GitHub. Now let's see if the curl was actually successful. And sure enough, we can see that there's the curl page. So what we've done is we were able to validate that our Azure firewall can communicate to GitHub using those self-hosted runner URLs, but also on our private network, communicate to our VPN. That's all for this video. Please like, subscribe, and share it. And until next time, Thanks a lot.